20 supersonic jets. That's how many aircraft American Airlines has ordered from Denver-based startup Boom Supersonic. Not only that, they also paid a non-refundable deposit for these 20 jets and announced an option to order an additional 40. Before that, United ordered 15 jets with an option to purchase 50 more. And JetBlue, Virgin Atlantic, and Japan Airlines partnered with Boom in development efforts. Overture, what the new jet is called, promises to bring back supersonic travel by 2029. Since Air France and British Airways retired the iconic Concorde back in 2003, not many dared to take its place. This time, it's finally serious. Why are aviation giants so eager to invest in this new technology? Will Overture be able to overcome the many challenges of the Concorde? And are we ready to experience the many joys of supersonic commercial aviation once again? Let's explore how supersonic flights might finally return. The idea of supersonic passenger travel was born in the 1950s, shortly after World War II. The aviation industry advanced so rapidly during those years that the only way forward seemed to be to go faster. Decades in development, Concorde, the first and only commercial supersonic jet, was born. Supersonic flights operate at a speed faster than the speed of sound. To break through the sound barrier, the Concorde bore a long and narrow body delta-shaped wings, a movable nose, and a vertical tail. It was able to punch through the air pressure, achieve twice the speed of sound of Mach 2.01, and cut travel time in half. Extraordinarily, you could fly from New York to London in just three hours. Unfortunately, the many unresolved problems, commercial failure, and a deadly crash in 2000 that killed 109 people led to the Concorde's subsequent retirement. It's the end for Concorde after 30 years of supersonic flying. British Airways and Air France will retire the plane in six months' time. Why did this happen, and how does new technology plan to avoid those mistakes? First, the luxury of speed wasn't available to everyone since Concorde flights were extremely expensive. In today's money, a one-way London-Washington flight via Concorde would cost around $2,700, and the fares got higher with time, spiking at $6,000 at the end of the 1990s. Targeting the elites, the Concorde managed to profit, but the fleet of only 14 aircraft, limited passenger capacity of 100 seats, and the short-lived prestige of the service meant that in its final days, British Airways and Air France had to run discounts for the general public to cover the operating expenses. It seems like this time supersonic travel won't be cheap either. Boom suggests that tickets will cost $5,000 per seat one way, which is in the ballpark of business class seats for a Heathrow JFK flight, so it certainly will remain a not for the masses transport. Besides, is there a market for supersonic flights, or are airlines investing based on mere enthusiasm? There's never been a market for Concorde-sized airliners seating 100 passengers, so it's estimated that to be financially feasible, there must be a fleet of 200 aircraft seating only 25 passengers. This poses some questions to Overture's declared capacity of up to 80 seats. At the same time, at the price point of a subsonic business class flight, Overture can be a viable alternative for corporate travel. But since the rise of video conferencing, we can't expect business travel to be as popular as it was during the Concorde's heyday, or even as relatively recently as when Boom started designing Overture in 2016. Developing the new type of superjet is an expensive endeavor. If the interested airlines build massive fleets with fewer seat counts, increase the route network, and be able to streamline production, they might overcome Concorde's challenges. Second, and perhaps the main reason Concorde was strongly protested, was the noise.
Breaking the sound barrier creates a sonic boom, a deafening noise very disruptive to citizens, animals, and services on the ground, even at 60,000 feet up. Soon after the Concorde launch, the FAA prohibited operating civil supersonic aircraft over land, which is why it mostly flew over the open sea. Could the noise problem be solved in the new generation of supersonic aircraft? Potentially, yes. NASA's Quest mission aims at developing and constructing a supersonic aircraft that won't generate sonic booms. They're using the X-59 research jet built by Lockheed Martin to fly over residential areas and gather data on human responses and the sound the new jet creates. If they manage to prove to the regulators that supersonic flight can be quiet, this could open the doors for commercial supersonic aviation over land. As for the Overture aircraft, it will reduce the noise at takeoff, but still won't be able to fix the sonic boom problem. Overture's environmental noise will blend in with the existing subsonic aircraft fleet. Overture won't have afterburners like Concorde, and its jet exhaust will be subsonic during takeoff. This means no loud shocks in its exhaust plume, like you would typically hear and see from supersonic military aircraft. So, while it might be able to fly from a normal airport without much disruption, Overture would still be able to travel only overseas. Another thing that must be improved from the Concorde age is the approach to sustainability. In its prime, the Concorde was subject to regulations allowing higher emissions than subsonic aircraft. But this can't happen with today's environmental concerns when IATA is committed to achieving net zero emissions by 2050. So how does Overture plan to adapt? Boom bets hard on sustainability and promises to be net zero carbon from day one. This means using clean aviation fuels such as biofuel and synthetic kerosene. Of course, these fuels are more expensive, which adds to the concern about Overture's economic feasibility. Luckily, as the demand for sustainable fuel among subsonic airliners grows and more sources of fuel are explored and adopted, it should become cheaper and more available. At the same time, today's engineers enjoy the advancements in fuel efficiency unavailable to their predecessors. Current commercial airliners produce 50% fewer CO2 emissions than they did in 1990, which allows for reducing operational costs. Seems good, right? There's definitely hope and a pretty high probability that Boom will manage to deliver on many of its promises. The manufacturer is currently working on the Iron Bird, a full-scale structural model of Overture used to test many of its systems. The actual aircraft production is planned to start in 2024, and by 2029, if it passes inspection, Overture will finally start carrying passengers at supersonic speed. This roadmap can't not remind us of the way it happened with Concorde. It was developed by the British and French governments with the initial intent to sell it to airlines, and interest was ripe with 18 airlines placing orders. In the end, most of those were canceled for several reasons. First was the cancellation of the Boeing 2707 in 1971, which was supposed to be a US-built supersonic commercial aircraft. Then in 1973, the Soviets Tu-144, its alternative to the Concorde crashed at the Paris Air Show, killing and injuring dozens of people. The lack of confidence in supersonic travel, as well as concerns over noise pollution and upkeep costs, grew. And only Air France and British Airways ended up flying the only 20 Concords built. United, American and other airlines that will likely be placing their orders soon seem pretty optimistic about returning to the supersonic age. We are too. We want to believe that Boom's team will manage to overcome any troubles. But we must remember that progress is achieved not only by going faster. Safety, sustainability, and economic and environmental impact matter just as much. And we will exceed only if we rise above them all. <laughs>